Welcome back to Whiskey Politics. I'm Dave Sussman. I'm still here at Chapman University, and I'm delighted to be sitting with Joanne Skousen. Joanne, how are you today? Fine, thank you. Thanks for having me. A pleasure. Now, you are the founder of the uh, the uh, Freedom Fest Film Festival. It's See if I can say called, that. <laughs> it's actually called the Anthem Libertarian Festival. Anthem Libertarian Festival, yes. which is at Freedom Fest. It's at Freedom Fest. It's a part of Freedom Fest. It's free to everyone who comes to Freedom Fest, right. or you can buy individual tickets and come just to the film festival. But if you come to Freedom Fest, it's part of that. Saw a couple of films last year at Freedom Fest. Uh, tell us a little bit about what type of films come to uh, the festival and, and who, who produces them. We're looking for films that have a libertarian theme, not necessarily anti-government, dystopian future, science fiction, but films about people who are fixing things for themselves, who are rugged individualists, who believe in choice and accountability. A lot of them are about um, government, but they're also about finding injustices and fixing them without having the government step in. I wanted to provide a venue for filmmakers who aren't always welcomed at film festivals and it's been great because in our first year we just had a few and now that there's a venue for libertarian films more and more people are making libertarian films. I'm really excited about that progress. Just as a point of, of interest, I actually attended a film last week uh, that's going to be at the film festival this year, uh, I Am or How Jack Became Black. And yes. You talk about you know people that feel that there's injustices. Do you want to talk about that one briefly because we just saw it, it was brilliant. Eli Steele, Eli Steele is right. a multiracial man who also happens to be deaf, um, and his children are even m more multiracial than he is. Mm -hmm. um, and he wanted to register his children without having to identify their ethnicity, and he wasn't allowed to. And if he left it blank, they would choose an ethnicity for his children. And so because of that, he investigated uh, the whole idea of ethnicity and identity politics and who's behind it and why it's important or, and, and what the real reason for it is. And he wants us to be more free and to be judged by our individuality and not by our ethnicity. So it's an interesting film. And then after the, the, um, the screening of the film, we'll have a panel. We have panels with all of our films. Right. Dinesh D'Souza, Deneen Borelli, and Michael Steele would be part of that panel. So there's always a great discussion after our films. Fantastic panel, by yes. the way. We had a chance of meeting with Dinesh last year and uh, look forward to visiting with him again this year. You're also going to be talking about the 100th anniversary of the Bolshevik re uh, Revolution this year. Yes, we are. At Freedom Fest will be uh, having several panels about communism and capitalism. Mm -hmm. It's also the 100th anniversary of Forbes magazine. And we have several films, serendipitously, that were uh, brought in. Three of them are short documentaries that tell the harrowing stories of three people who were able to escape from communism. One is Yan Mi Park. Mm -hmm. She spoke at Freedom Fest two years ago, and now Josh Oldman has made a short film about her escape from communism called uh, Go to Where the Light Is. Mm -hmm. And another film is, called, is about Anastasia Lin, who is a Chinese um, escapee, refugee from communism, who went on to, um, to compete in the Miss Universe pageant for Canada. Wow. And then um, Armando Valladares, who is, was known as the blood poet of Cuba, he was incarcerated for nearly 20 years and finally escaped from Cuba. So those three films I think are really powerful. Yeah, and another subject which I, I have tremendous interest in is obviously a libertarian-leaning festival. Um, you're going to obviously have a discussion about Ayn Rand. Well, we do. Uh, you know, I don't always get good quality narrative features. This year I have three of them. Okay. We have Little Pink House by Courtney Balaker, which is our opening night film, and it's about the Suzette Kilo case, the eminent domain case, where her entire neighborhood was, uh, was confiscated so that Pfizer could build a laboratory. She fought that case all the way to the Supreme Court. And we'll have um, Scott Bullock, who was her attorney, will be there at the screening. Suzette Kilo herself will be at right. the screening, and that's our opening night film. We also have a film called Re-Evolution by a Spanish filmmaker named um, David Sousa Moreau. And I was delighted with this film. The quality is excellent. It's a tense, edgy kind of thriller. Kind of has a V is for Vendetta sort of feel to right. it. Um, and a lot of great quotable quotes that I think Ayn Rand would be, would be really happy about. I'm so excited about this little film from a filmmaker I've never heard of before. And he's really excited to come. You say there's 
quotable quotes in there that come from the messaging that could have been written for uh, by, uh, for Howard Rourke or John Galt. That's right. That's right. I, I was I was practically cheering in my office as I was watching this film when I came to those uh, those great heroic messaging ideas at the end, and and it has a V is for Vendetta kind of of ending to it too. So I think it's going to be a great film. We'll be showing that on Thursday night. That's fantastic. Uh, tell me real briefly, because, uh, you know, we're here in Southern California. Chapman University is in Orange, California, just down the road from Hollywood. Um, a lot of the films that you have at this festival, do they not see the light of the day at uh, the Sundance-type film festivals? And, and if not, why? Some of them have. Um, okay. I'm starting to get a lot of films that have had some play at really top-quality um, festivals. Some of them have started at my festival and gone on to international okay. acclaim. Poverty Inc. is one of those. Um, it, it started at Anthem and then went on to have huge success internationally. Mm -hmm. um, but most of them don't. And I think it's because Hollywood doesn't quite get the, uh, the freedom message. The idea that, peop that the world will be a better place if each individual is better off. That we, that we are a collection of individuals and we don't need someone else to make us better or to, or to take care of us. That if we all take care of ourselves and have a little left to take care of others, um, in terms of capitalism, the idea that when I create a good or service that you need and you pay me for it, we're both better off. It, mm -hmm. It's so, it's such common sense, and yet Hollywood doesn't quite get it. So we're providing a venue for those kinds of films. Mama Rwanda is a great example. It's about uh, women who are becoming successful in business and politics in Rwanda after the genocide, which killed so many of the men and left behind basically young boys and, and old men. And these women are becoming hugely successful in business and politics. So we right. have a 30-minute documentary about that. It's interesting because uh, Hollywood ultimately is a capitalistic uh, economy. I mean, they're producing a product. And just judging on the standing room only overflow capacity of the films that I saw at last year's Freedom Fest, um, I'm, I'm, I'm just wondering whether or not there's a political narrative that is, is causing some of these films to be sidelined. It's ironic, isn't it, that Hollywood is one of the most commercial, capitalist-oriented industries right. in the country. In fact, our keynote speaker, William Shatner, will be talking about that, right. the, the conflict he encountered between his vision for Star Trek V and the producers who needed to worry about the commercial value of it and, uh, and, and the, the compromises that have to be made when you're creating a film. It's very capitalistic, uh, but they just feel like they can't quite promote that. So most libertarian filmmakers have to kind of hide that messaging inside a great story. And you find that sometimes. There have been some wonderful um, libertarian heroes, but they're not advertised as libertarian heroes. Right, right. Well, it's interesting that William Shatner is going to be there, and, and he's going to be speaking at the Anthem uh, Film Festival part as well. Well, it's, Anthem and Freedom Fest are combined. Are combined. Right. So uh, anyone who comes to Anthem will also be at Freedom Fest and everyone can go and listen to William Shatner Friday night. Okay, okay, great. And we're really looking forward to, to, to hearing him speak. Um, you also mentioned that um, you're going to be having a, um, a speaker that's going to be talking about Charlton Heston. Oh, Mark Elliott is right. uh, ho our Hollywood biographer. He's been mm -hmm. coming to Freedom Fest for years. He has written at least 25 biographies of, um, of s Hollywood people and other celebrities as well. And he has just finished his book on Charlton Heston. Okay. And so Fraser Heston, Charlton's son, right. is coming uh, with Mark, and he'll be part of, uh, of his presentations. And again, it's also uh, co-sponsored by the Anthem Film Festival. Fantastic. Fantastic. Now, we have a film that's kind of connected with whiskey politics. Please. We have uh, Drew Tidwell, who is a returning alum to Anthem. He has actually produced uh, two or three films that mm -hmm. have made their way to Anthem. He has a film called I, Whiskey. Mm -hmm. And if you've ever read the pamphlet I, Pencil, that was sponsored by FEE, the Foundation for Economic right. Education, it tells the story of how no one person could, could make a pencil and yet we can buy it for 25 cents. You, you have to get um, graphite from England, and, and the eraser is made from rubber from South America, and the wood comes from 
um, from trees in California and you need the machinery and, and you put it all together and, and if one person tried to do that it would cost $10,000 or more but you can buy it for a quarter. Um, I whiskey is kind of like that but with whiskey and it talks about how whiskey, uh, as you, you've said about whiskey politics, that it's uh, a, a coming together for conversation mm -hmm. and sometimes for revolution. Taverns were the location of right. revolution in the during the early years of America. Um, so it does both. It talks about the, the um, free market that creates something like whiskey, but also the social aspects of whiskey drinking. So it's I, comma, whiskey as a mm -hmm. name, but it's also a verb, I, whiskey. Um, great little film, wonderful production values. Yeah, no, that sounds really interesting. Um, one, of the, one of the other films that I'm actually looking forward to seeing is really timely right now, especially with Donald Trump, and we're talking about potentially building a wall on the border, and that relates to eminent domain, Little Pink House. Little Pink House is a great little film. It's a narrative feature by uh, Courtney Balaker, directed mm -hmm. by Dor Courtney Balaker. Um, whose husband, Ted Balaker, happened to win the Freedom Fest Grand Prize last year with uh, Can We Take a Joke? Right. I call them the dynamic duo of libertarian Fantastic filmmaker. Fantastic movie, by the way. We yes. wrote about it on Ricochet. Yes, great movie yes. about freedom of speech on campus. Um, Little Pink House is a narrative feature. Courtney specializes in narratives. It's about the Suzette Kilo case. Suzette mm -hmm. was uh, just a small town nurse. Uh, who found a little house on the river that she loved and suddenly the the town fathers thought they could make more money by turning it over to Pfizer and letting them build a big complex there and she fought it all the way to the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. They lost but it got so much attention that now 40 states have um, have tightened their their private property laws to prevent those kinds of eminent domain cases. Unfortunately, President Trump seems ready to undo all of that with his border wall that's going to require some eminent domain, and, and he's kind of bragged about his um, uh, eminent domain to try and build a parking lot in Atlantic City. So, mm -hmm. uh, so it is a very timely issue right now. Yeah. Uh, and Suzette Kilo will be there. Scott uh, Bullock, who was the attorney who, who took the case to the Supreme Court, will be at our opening night gala, so we're looking forward mm -hmm. to that. One more I, I'd like to discuss briefly, and again, very, very timely, coming off the election where the media got it so wrong. I think there's a documentary called Democracy Through the Looking Glass. Democracy Through the Looking Glass. I'm really pleased with this film. It, um, it asks that question, how did the media get it so wrong? How is it that we were more surprised by this than when Truman beat Dewey? Just mm -hmm. as in that case, they already had, Time Magazine already had its, its uh, cover stories on the newsstands with, with Hillary winning and then Trump won. Um, and what it suggests, and, and it does this through numerous film clips and, and, uh, and stories from during the campaign, the media focused on the game plan. The mm -hmm. media focused on the campaign strategies. They were always asking, what do you think of the polls and how are you going to change your poll numbers and what are you going to do to get your polls up? That was all they cared about was the game plan. Meanwhile, when you went to the town halls, the actual voters were asking about the issues. What are you going to do about education? What are you going to do about prison reform? What are you going to do about jobs? They were interested in the issues, not the game plan. And the only candidate that was really interested in the issues was Donald Trump, and mm -hmm. that's how he got elected. Really interesting film because it not only observes what happened, but also what's going to happen. How is the media going to continue in its coverage, not just of the game strategy, but the true issues. What's happening in Venezuela? No one would know if it, we just counted on the news media. So it's, it's a really timely documentary. Fantastic. So Paris Resort this summer uh, from July 19th to the 22nd. You guys are going to be taking over the Versailles Theater, is it? Yes, we're taking the Versailles Three Room to be our, our theater. Um, if you come to Freedom Fest, it's mm -hmm. part of your ticket. You don't need a separate ticket. It's right. just included. If you just want to come and spend four days watching great documentaries, you can get a Film Lover's Pass, and that's also available at freedomfest.com or at anthemfilmfestival.com. Fantastic. And just from the standpoint of balancing art and commercialism, as you call it, I think it's a wonderful lesson for everybody, especially those that are free market, free mind thinkers. Joanne, thank you so much. And the website again? 
anthemfilmfestival.com. Anthemfilmfestival.com. Thank you so much. We look forward to seeing you this summer. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much. All right.